Hey everybody, Cheap Comic Collector here. This is episode number 41, I think. It's hard to keep track. Um, got that upcoming live show once we hit 100 subscribers. So go ahead and subscribe. Send me your address so you will be eligible for the giveaways. Um, a couple episodes ago, I showed the books I'll be giving away. Uh, we will be giving away more than that. So, you know, you do get a free book just for subscribing. Um, you do not have to be present at the giveaway live show in order to win. So just subscribe, send me your address, and you will be entered. Um, should be lots of fun, so I hope you do stop by. But if you don't, that's okay. I understand there's other things going on. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at some kids' comics. I bought this lot off of eBay. And I spent $56.01, which puts the comics at $0.84 cents a piece. There were supposed to be over 74, 75 comics in this box. There was only 67. Um, the seller just threw them in a box, like so. So, that's what we have there. Um, these are in rough shape but still fun. Uh, it looked like as I was going through them and putting them on the list of comics that I now have, uh, there was a few that aren't complete. Uh, they're either they're missing a centerfold. Uh, there's a few issues like that. I'm not sure which ones they are at this point. Um, but they are in pretty rough shape. We got a, a, a nice Looney Tunes number here. This is number... 22, but as you can see, the cover is loose, which is kind of what you expect from these thoughts, real honestly. Um, you know, I mean, these were much loved by somebody growing up. I mean, if I had had these comics when I was a kid, this is exactly the kind of shape they would be in, um, if not worse than this, <laughs> because I would have read them to death. Uh, Pink Panther, number 57. Looney Tunes, number 26. Moby Duck number 22 Tweety and Sylvester in a pretty rough shape there this is number 84 and as I was flipping through these I saw in one of the Tweety and Sylvester's I don't know if this one if it's this one or not but yeah it, it, I think it is there's a like a a club of cats that Sylvester belongs to. And I remember reading those about those. There was a comic that I had when I was a kid that had those characters in it. And I didn't realize they were continuing characters. I thought it was just, you know, like a one shot deal. So I think that I thought that was interesting. Um, 187 of Donald Duck. Donald Duck. Number 177. Um, Southern Hospitality, that's an old uh, story it's from an old four-color issue, so that reprints probably a pretty good story, even though it's not by Carl Burks. Donald Duck 219, uh, an uh, early Gladstone issue, Mickey Mouse number 220. This is a great storyline. If you get a chance to pick up the Seven Ghosts storyline from Mickey, from the Mickey Mouse series when Gladstone first started, just I think that's my favorite uh, Floyd Gafferson adventure story from the Mickey Mouse comic strips. Uh, Donald Duck, number 235. And a Donald Duck with a nice chunk out of the cover there, number 182. And another Donald Duck, 178. Walt Disney Showcase, number 39, uh, featuring Mickey and the Sleuth. Uh, I was first exposed to Mickey and the Sleuth from some giveaway. I think it was some, some kind of soap product giveaway that I got when my mom was grocery shopping as a kid. Um, they had like a free comic, free Mickey Mouse magazine or something, and it had a Mickey and, and the Sleuth story in it. Um, the artwork in these are pretty good, and it's basically uh, Mickey as Dr. Watson to this uh, other sleuth who's... I don't know if he ever had a name. Everybody just calls him Sleuth, I think. Uh, and then there's a backup story in this issue, too, that 
you can tell by the artwork that it was a studio story, uh, meaning that the, the, the Walt Disney Studios actually produced it and then sold it to the comic publishers um, across the world. Uh, so, uh, but this is this is a fun. The artwork is fun in this. Um, the Mickey and Goofy and Black Pete on the ocean voyage pirate story. Um, this is a great cover. I loved this cover when I saw it. I think this was the book that was on top when I opened the box, and I immediately just loved that cover of Goofy as the the big iconic idol. Uh, number one seventy two. That is. From the seven, most of these are from the 70s. You can tell the Mickey Mouse Club logos, 25 and 30 cent price points. Uh, Mickey Mouse 214. Mickey Mouse number one something. I can't tell. It's kind of blurry. And then this was just a coverless story, coverless comic that was thrown in there. Um, it's missing a bit. It's not only missing the cover, but it's missing the outer pages as well. Uh, so probably just throw that in the garbage, honestly. Um, looks like it was an old Walt Disney Comics and Stories issue. And we got some more. I got that issue of Daisy and Donald. Uh, this is number 25. And this one's in rough shape. It's got a... I don't know what that is. That's something on there. Some nasty... Uh, Donald Duck number 247. And these, I'm, I'm actually happy to get these Gladstone issues. They're in relatively nice shape. Pages are still pretty white. Um, and my copies, I've been sorting through my copies lately as I've been dating, going through and putting stickers on the bags to date them. And my copies all have water damage from the fire that I've talked about before. Um, so these are going to be, even though they're a little worn, these are actually upgrades from what I currently have. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Tom and Jerry, number 298. Um, I did leave, I didn't leave negative feedback. I left, I think, neutral feedback on eBay for the guy selling these because, I mean, I didn't get all the books. He, he said there were 74. I only got 64. Um, I mean, the box was completely full. He couldn't have got more comics in there. So maybe, you know, maybe there's a chance he's going to send me, like, an envelope with the rest of them, but I doubt it. Uh, Tom and Jerry 311, Walt Disney Comics and Stories 475, and Walt Disney Comics Story 512, another early Gladstone issue. And we got some Super Goof, number 59. I like the ones that have the numbers on the cover. Casey and Donald 57. Walt Disney Comics and Stories 505. I can relate, Goofy. I can relate. Uh, Daisy and Donald number 43. Uncle Scrooge. Uh, Treasure of Marco Polo. This is actually a banned Carl Burke story that they won't reprint anymore. So that's kind of cool. Uh, another Super Goof. It's Tweety and Sylvester 94. And Uncle Scrooge. Super Goof and the Bugs Bunny. So these are fun. Um, like I said, they're pretty beat up, but I don't think you can avoid that buying these kind of comics. To be honest, they, these were all loved and adored by children, and this is what they ended up being. Bugs Bunny 220. Uh, another Bugs Bunny. That's kind of funny. <laughs> Uh, it's got a chunk out of the cover. 221. 218. 219. Uh, scamp issue. Uh, getting a visit from a gopher there. Number 35. Maybe that's the gopher from Winnie the Pooh. He's in the book. Uh, uh, oh, here we have... Somebody wrote on this cover quite a bit, but uh, this is a Dynabrite comic. This is uh, Whitman's tried doing a line of uh, comics on better paper with cardboard covers. Um, you can see here, let me grab this next issue. You can see that the Dynabrites are, heightwise, they're about the same, but widthwise, 
there's a there's another half inch in width there for some reason. I don't really understand that. Maybe kind of the size of a coloring book instead of a comic book, honestly. Um, but it allows for bigger panels, and you know they went to the better paper. This might have been like one of the first Baxter paper series before you know DC Comics, Marvel Comics ever even got a hold of the idea. Uh, so, so those are kind of neat. This is actually the first one I've ever gotten. Um, another there was a bunch of Disney issues of these. I think there was maybe a couple Looney Tune ones. I know there was some Star Trek ones. Um, but this is actually my first one, so that's that's cool. I like that. Uh, Walt Disney's Comics and Stories 494. <clears throat> and I'm just going to take a drink here. I'm losing my voice a little bit. This is the fourth episode that I've filmed today. Uh, drinking Mountain Dew. Don't know why people show that, but hey, whatever. <laughs> um... So yeah, I'm trying to get ahead of the on the videos a little bit so I can have some time to prepare for the upcoming giveaway and maybe do a practice round and just record it so I can see what I'm doing. Because uh, you can re record without going live and that'll give me an opportunity of kind of just testing the waters and see how I see how the controls work and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, uh, Chippendale number 65, Chippendale number 80. Walt Disney Comics and Stories, 465. And another I issue of Walt Disney Comics and Stories. That one's got a tear, like, a long ways away. I'm out of archival tape, um, but I ordered some more that's supposed to be coming. Uh, let's see, today's Saturday, tomorrow. And a lot of these are going to need that. Um, there's another Chip and Dale. And this was a surprise in there, a Kid Cold Outlaw in amongst all the kids' books. Um, it's in decent, you know, not in great shape, but it's in decent shape. 20, uh, uh, number 226 from uh, 1978. I think that's towards the end of the run. And I always enjoyed the Marvel Westerns. Um, I also always enjoyed these these toy ads. They, they never didn't, didn't have something that I wanted. <laughs> uh, and in the back of this one, there's a nice uh, pinup of Kid Colt and not sure who drew it because I don't see a signature on it but eventually I'll review the issue and we'll find out uh, Daffy Duck well, he's got a loose cover as well it's Daffy Duck number 110 and Daffy Duck meets Duckula that's interesting that would be before Count Duckula uh, it's from 1975 that, that, that might be fun. That's a neat cover. Uh, well, Disney Comics and Stories. This one's number... Mm, volume 37, number 11 from August 77. So, which continuing number is... Your guess is, is as good as mine. And then we got one last stack. There were quite a few in this. Just not as many as he said. Uh, a really rough shape of Dennis the Menace. Um... You know, I, 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 even archival tape won't save this one. <laughs> this one is... The only reason it's connected is at some point they put a piece of tape on it. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll read the stories and then it'll probably hit the trash bin. It's just not much you can do for that one. Uh, we got Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Nice cover. Uh, Daisy and Donald. A... I can relate, Donald. Yeah, I just got done more not on. Uh, Daisy and Donald again. A Tweety and Sylvester. It's like somebody was figuring out their math on the cover. That's that's nice. Woody Woodpecker. Woody Woodpecker. Walt Disney's Comics and Stories 477. This is going to say, judging by the logo, this was a later issue, towards the end of their run, 1980. Uh, Huey Dooley Jr. Woodchucks. Definitely have not seen that cover before. Number 44. It's a fun cover. 
Uh, Chip and Dale bouncing on the spider web. This is number 48. And that looks familiar. Didn't we just look at that one? <laughs> we have. Yes, I have two issues of the very same book. So that will go in my doubles. Doubles, I gotta get this Dennis the Menace out of there. It's destroying itself trying to stand up. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, there's two of that. Woody Woodpecker 179. And Woody Woodpecker again. And uh, here's a comic I've never seen before. The Flintstones starring Dino. Uh, this your title is just Dino. Is it Dino or Dino? I've always said Dino. Uh, anyway, it's number 12 from Charlton Comics. You know, this is not something you see every day. Looks, uh, looks like it's fun. I always enjoyed the Flintstones. That was one of my favorite cartoons come, growing up. Flintstones and Scooby-Doo. Uh, Beagle Boys versus Uncle Scrooge. Number number 12. So that was the last episode or the last issue of that series. Daisy and Donald and another Beagle Boys and a Dennis the Menace in better shape. Vacation sensation. Dennis the Menace goes to Jamaica. And the print on these is really hard to read for the numbers. This is... Oh, wow. <laughs> Look at this. The indicia is actually printed reversed. So you can't read it. I would have to hold it up to a mirror to try and decipher it. <laughs> Oops. Somebody made a mistake on that one. Alright, so that does it for those books. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe if you want to be part of that giveaway. A um, couple episodes I showed the books I'm going to be giving away. There's some good stuff in there. Thank you for watching. Um, let's see, tomorrow we're going to start looking at the books from Comic Book Connection, the big tent sale that I went to, uh, which I mentioned a few episodes ago. So we've got three short boxes. I'm going to split it up into six episodes, and it's just going to be a marathon run of hauls for six days. Uh, comic book connection I'm going to do some shout outs for them and and just uh, show you what I got um, I got a lot of books I got them cheap uh, I could have done better I realized on the way home that I, I made a mistake I could have done better so tune in for that we'll see you next time thanks guys